Now I am climbing up the stairs onto the boat. This boat takes me to Moshuni, a chor or a river island. Moshuni is one of the 104 river islands that comprises the Shundabuns. Of these 104 chores or river islands, only 54 are inhabited. অসংখ্য মানুষের হাহাকার শুনেও নিঃশব্দে নীরবে Sometimes I feel as though nature and human beings are engaged in a strange game in Shundurbon. If nature moves one step forward, people step back. And then people step forward and nature steps back. And this embankment is a metaphor of this continuous game that human beings are playing with nature. This particular embankment that I'm standing on now was built only a month ago. It's made of clay. Other embankments made of concrete have been breached time and again. I'm literally at the end of the delta. This is Chor Moshuni, and I'm in the Baliara part of Moshuni Chor. An embankment used to protect this village, most of which is fishing community. A couple of years ago, that embankment breached. Embankments, as you know, protect the Sundabans. It has been the curse of Sundabans at the same time the rivers that bring the enormous quantities of silt that built the Sundabans cannot now put that silt anywhere because of the embankments that protect the land from the rivers. As a result, in some places, the river beds have become higher than the villages. Where we are, is very low lying. The entire area is only about two meters higher than the sea level. And this year, the tidal surge was very high. They are increasingly becoming higher and higher. And sea water came in through this entire area. So what you're seeing here used to be farming land. And now the entire area has become a waterlogged land, as you can see, covered with saline water. In spite of everything, the population of Sundarbon grew at a very rapid rate. From around one and a half million in 1951, just after India's independence. Today, there are around 4.5 million people living in Shundarbon. And what's more, the density of population is also very high. As a result of that, each cyclone, each flood event, each tidal surge, 
takes many more lives than anywhere else in the world. This has led to a growing awareness amongst organizations about the need to protect the people. And what they have provided is, amongst many other things, is flood shelters like this one. The building behind me, as you can see, is standing on stilts and it's raised above the highest level of flood waters. The building also has a hand water pump which is located on the first floor. Climate change is a reality in Shundarbon. It's happening. River banks are ero eroding. Sea level is rising. Salty, saline sea water is destroying people's farmlands. So what do people do when a rich agricultural land gets destroyed by saline water. Here you see people are using it for fish farming. People make do with whatever little they have now. This is what old houses used to be in Shundarbon, made of mud and bamboo. In old houses, you would see that the plinth level was quite low. The problem with the old houses was that the mud used to get washed away more easily during floods, which have now become more common. As a result, people are building up and the houses here are now at a much higher level. The owner of this house tells us that it is five feet higher than the surrounding surface. And as you can see, it is also buttressed with something more solid than just clay. It's buttressed in this instance with tiles, but we have seen other houses that are buttressed by bricks or even concrete. This gives the householders a sense of security and rising above the waters when the waters themselves are rising beyond their control. I'm standing right at the edge of the river, one of the many rivers that make up this place, Sundabans. The Shundaban area comprises of trees and forests like this, with aerial roots sticking out of the mud. These special tree and shrubs grow in tidal swampy areas of the coasts in the tropics. They have innumerable tangled roots that grow above ground and that form dense thickets. The roots raise themselves above the soil to breathe because the low-lying areas get submerged by high tide twice every day. This mangrove forest is crucial to the survival of the Shundabuns. But the mangroves are fast depleting, partly due to human need for forest resources, fuel for everyday use, and wood for furniture and other purposes. What makes it worse is that little effort is being given to replanting these forests to maintain the fragile ecosystem. After all, it is the mangrove that keeps the deltaic ecosystem together. Mangroves offer the first line of defense in face of the onslaught from the rising sea levels, the tidal surges and the tropical storms. 
people talk about the Sundarbon as a place which is constantly changing, dynamic. But we can also see it as a place that's continuously rising now. As the sea level rises, people also step up and they raise their houses. The entire place is rising. The houses are rising. The embankments, the heights of the embankments are also rising. It's a delta that is rising today. Bono, put high